Hi there, Jasper from Yellow Glove Productions here today with Luke Farmworth of Luke James Digital. And today we're going to be talking about what is important to focus on in your digital marketing. So Luke, how are you today? You all good? Yes, so, very good, very good. Good, good. So we had a good chat last time. We I think, did. What did we talk about? Something about digital marketing, I'm sure. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I can talk for days when it comes to Digi, so yeah. Perfect. But you, you raised some important points about, um, you went into detail about funnels um, yes. and actually using your content as well and strategically using that, I guess. I think what I probably wanted to say this time was there's... I think it can get really, really scary, uh, especially if you're not a marketing professional, you yeah. run a small business and you are, you know, you're, you're everything, aren't you? Uh, we all know what it's like running a small business. You're the admin, you're <laughs> the finance, you're doing your actual job and you're also the marketeer, which can be so daunting. Yeah. Um, and if you know, you, you can't go out and get an agency to, to work for you. What I'm probably saying is focus on two, maybe three things and do them really, really well, mm. rather than, you know, there's a hundred things that you could be yeah. doing. Doing a hundred things, not that great. Yeah. Um, doing two or three things makes more sense. It's that whole jack of trades thing, isn't it? You don't want to be a, a jack of all trades. So then in terms of digital marketing then, yeah. I guess it's different for, you know, a case business to business, yeah. but um you know what what would you say are two sort of important things that you really focus on first thing to focus on is what platform you're going to focus on right so before you even say what you're going to do you could be on so many platforms you could be on the platforms that come and go clubhouse you know where did, where did that, go? that yeah um, <laughs> that's an interesting week <laughs> yeah yeah i know i i had I, this it, it's an important point though because that week I probably had five, maybe six calls from clients saying, should we be on this? And I was like, let's see where it goes. Yeah. Um, and and that, that shows again, you know, it doesn't matter what your budget is. Don't, don't just do everything because. Yeah. Um, so roundabout way of answering this question. Sorry, Jasper, you know what I'm like. Um, so what I'm probably saying is work out what platforms you're gonna use, work out when you're gonna post, um, so when are your audience online? Is it a business audience? Is it consumer audience? Are your audience stay-at-home parents? So it might be midday that might be the best time to, or are they out at work? So working out where your audience is and what they're doing is really important. Um, and then also, how are you gonna put a bit of paid media in here? So it would be great, wouldn't it, if we could post everything online and everyone see it. Oh yeah, but unfortunately, It'd be ideal, wouldn't it? It really would. <laughs> The Mark Zuckerbergs of this uh, world um, are pay to play. Uh, so we're seeing organic drop all the time. And what we're, what we're seeing is, is people have to pay to get those eyeballs from their consumer. So I would be looking at your organic um, and how you're posting that. And then also just even if you know, you're spending like 50 quid a week, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. It doesn't have to be massive budgets but just I'd be spending a little bit so you can continue to grow. Yeah. What you want to see is, is that growth just... So like compounding, I guess, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, just yeah. over time, yeah. even if it's little. It doesn't matter, it doesn't graduate matter. That. Um, you know, the, the sooner you start, the better in, in my eyes, because you know, if, it, if I started learning piano yeah. a year ago today, I'd be a lot better than if I started today. Yeah. Um, so, you know, start and, and just let that sort of grow um, over time. Have you, have you got an example of a business you've worked with or a business you know that is really sort of focused on one or two platforms? You know, they really know where their audience is and something like that. Yeah, so um, we've been working with Mr. Porky for a while now. Um, I've I've got a, I've got Plain a big love. Fame. <laughs> oh, no. um, I've got, I've got a big love for, for Mr. Porky. Um, they, uh, you know, I'll say why they took a chance on me when yeah. I started my business. So, um, we've got a massive love for them. But, but we're focusing on Facebook and Instagram. So we, when we started with them, um, they didn't really use Facebook. I think they 
gathered about a thousand likes just yeah. from people that knew Mr. Porky and had liked the page. And we, we grew that really, really sustainably. So we, we didn't want to like big growth. Um, we wanted to find raving fans of yes. Port Scratchings, right? Um, and if you know me, you know I talk about raving fans <laughs> yeah. all the time. Uh, I think our consumers should be raving fans for our brands. Um, and so we, we're up to about 20,000 likes now, uh, which we've done over the last year, Brilliant. really focusing on sustainability um, of, of our consumer base. Um, and focus, now starting to focus on Instagram and, and looking at like reels and video and, mm. and how we can incorporate that within our, um, within our marketing strategy. So, so you're saying once you've found what platform works, then you can, you know, once you've had a good go at that and grown that to a sustainable level, then maybe start looking at other platforms. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's brands out there that are on every platform and that's fine. They probably have a really big marketing team. Um, you know, the pretty little things, ASOS of this world. Yeah. They, they'll have teams just for Facebook, just for Twitter, just for Instagram. So, you know, if you've got the resource out there to do it, then go ahead and do it. But by and large, most brands, big and small, don't yeah. have that resource. Slow, continuous growth is better in my eyes than one week doing amazingly, but the next two weeks doing terribly. Uh, so you've talked about knowing what platform, then what would you say a second uh, most important thing to focus on digital marketing wise? Content. Content. Content, content, content. My mantra is if you ain't got nothing to say, don't say anything at all, right? Uh, so my, I, I see it all the time where I go into a business and they say, we post five times a week. Great, <laughs> brilliant. What are you talking about? Well, we've kind of ran out of stuff to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're, we're talking about um, national ice cream day. I'm like, it's fine, but you're a, a, you've got nothing to do with ice yeah. cream. Um, and just sort of pulling it, yeah, ideas. and Really, really painful sometimes, right? Um, if you've got nothing to say, don't say anything at all. Um, work out what you're going to say and say it really, really well. And use great content, use static, use video, I'm a massive fan of video. Yeah, um, so it's always good, you know, do get in touch if you need. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow Glove Productions. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I, I think video tells a story that statics probably can't, right? Um, and that's not to say, I'm gonna be, I've gotta be completely honest and impartial here, that static definitely has a place within yeah, yeah. within the marketing world, um, but video allows us to tell a story um, and show emotion as a brand. Brands have emotion, right? Um, and we want that to go through. So focus on content. Focus on what you're going to say. Don't worry if you post once a week, yeah. but that post is really really thought out, yeah. and it's got a really clear and concise message. That's so much better than posting five times, but no one really knows what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, th this is it. Um, I think when I started, like the very beginning when I started my Facebook page for Yellow Glove Productions, I think I, I was like, oh, I've got to post every day. So I'd post like a video related news article or something yeah. um, that, I could, that I could find. I'd, re I'd read through, I'd make sure it wasn't completely random, but it'd just be something supporting that you should have video in business. But you know, eventually it's like, ran out of ideas yeah. <laughs> it's like okay i need to think of something else but the the real change was when i stopped looking outwards for content and started looking more inwards and okay what can i produce internally okay we're a video company so we need to produce our own video content really mm -hmm. uh, practice what we preach and you know be ahead with that be ahead of other video companies that produce amazing work but they're not looking inwards and showing who they are so yeah. I definitely think there's something in that where you're saying it's not about posting every day, uh, but just making sure what you post is quality content. Yeah, absolutely. I, we, we worked with a client recently uh, that came to us and posted multiple times a day, right? Mm. Like it blew my mind how often they posted. Sometimes it would, an hour wouldn't go by without them posting another post. And I was like, oh my God. Um, and we cut that down to, I think, four posts a week mm. from like 
five posts a day to four posts a week. Our engagement was higher yeah. with four posts a week oh, yeah. than when they were posting like 10 times a day. So, so what do you say to those um, gurus out there? <laughs> Certain big names that say three times a day is the one. It, has that got his, its place somewhere? No, or? no, it's, it's, it's not. Because every single brand's different, right? Um, I, I really, I, it, I'm sat here now giving advice and I'm gonna say like, these gurus that say like, you've gotta do this, you've gotta yeah. do this. You know, engage 30 minutes before, 30 minutes during and 30 minutes after. Sometimes we don't have time for that, right? Yeah. I'm lucky that I run a marketing agency and that's all we do, right? But if you're doing this yourself, you probably don't have time to do that. And that's okay. Um, I get really frustrated seeing these gurus sort of going around saying, you must do this, you must post three times a day. No, you don't. Mm. No, no, you don't. Greg's one of the <laughs> best marketing um, teams in the country. They won't post for days on end. Yeah. Innocent Smoothie, I love their page. Honestly, like, genuinely, I run a business, but Innocent, if you want to give me a job, <laughs> I will come and work for you, right? <laughs> they won't post for days on end. Yeah. Um, and that's fine, because they will post something that's really relevant, really yeah. funny, really engaging. That's it. They, they've, they've done well with that sort of, that branding and, yeah, quality content over yeah. over quantity of content, I Absolutely. think, which is which is very important. We've talked about what's you know important in digital marketing and, and where to where to focus. Mm. Um, I think one thing we wanted to talk about today is maybe the future <laughs> of digital marketing. <laughs> now, if that's us getting caught up in particular podcasts, but um, probably it, <laughs> it's it's very interesting space where we are at the moment and there's a lot of uh keywords i'm going to get them out for the seo nfts web 3.0 <laughs> the metaverse decentralization um, decentralization <laughs> but i mean i was listening to a podcast the other day with uh mark zuckerberg and he was talking about obviously they've rebranded uh to meta from facebook which is all a bit strange and they've got the the hold on meta trademarks and stuff, I don't know what's going on, but they are opening up the world of decentralization and making that more of a, more of a mainstream thing. Yeah. And one point that got raised was this concept of uh, online worlds and one was Decentraland, they was talking about online space and land that got sold for millions of pounds, dollars. And I just thought, where where is the the space for digital marketing and advertising going to be for that? Are we going to see digital billboards with our VR headsets? on? we're going to be looking <laughs> around and, and see Mr. Paul yeah. yeah. or, or Golden Mr. Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? And um and yeah, I just think it's it's a very interesting future we've got ahead of us uh, in the digital marketing space. I think so. What what are your thoughts on that then? Uh, so. I think I think things are going to change a hell of a lot. I think um, technology tends to go backwards a little bit before it goes forward. Yes. Yeah. So um, I saw Mark Zuckerberg posted the other day um, a, a VR uh, filter lens that they'd created, and it was for metaverse. And if I'm honest, it was rubbish. Yeah. It was yeah. what um, it was what barbecue saw to you, and it came upon your head. It was awful. <laughs> But you know that you kind of need to take a step back yes. to then go forward. Um, I think NFTs as well. I, what we're using NFTs for right now is not what they are going to be used for. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, things that I was thinking about was like concerts. Mm. So what if you buy an NFT and that then gives you access to a concert? So it becomes a ticket ultimately yes. because it is, it is a ticket within the blockchain. Um, so it, it becomes a ticket ultimately, which allows you to go to the, the concert, allows you to own a part of that concert forever. I think that's really interesting. Um, Damien Hurst, I believe. Okay, um, bought out, he's back in the game. Yeah, he's back in the game. <laughs> uh, bought out a really interesting NFT where there's a physical version of the art and an NFT. Yeah. After five years, maybe, you can either sell back the NFT and get the physical version or keep the NFT. Yeah. So that's almost 
dipping our toe in. It's it's pretty to, crazy what's going on. I I think that with on the NF, NFT front, there's going to be a lot with copyright and defining online licensing things like that, which is going to be interesting for music, video and film in particular. Yeah. Um, just showing who's who's the sole owner of that. So you know when contracts go through. Um, using NFTs as a way of currency between, you know, trading and bartering. It's, it's a very interesting space. Um, and maybe it will be that uh, you end up with, in terms of marketing, you know, offering NFT. You know, there's, there's a very crazy future ahead. I think so. Um, and I think, you know, going into that sort of like, you know, what, what's it going to look like um, from a marketing point of view? We will be there, you know, brands will be there because they've got to be there. If they're not there, they will die. Um, so I think we're gonna see brands getting into like the metaverse um, as that comes to fruition. If I'm honest, I don't think the metaverse in a state where everyone's in it, I don't think it's that close. No, really. no. I, I think there's a lot of work to be done. It's to, a while off, Yeah, it's a while off. I think maybe 10 years time yeah. will be, Yeah. A bit closer, but I'm not sure just how how mainstream no. it will be. I, I don't think it's next year, is what I'm saying. I don't think it's 2022. I think it's more like 2032 or yeah. you know 2042. And and that's what Facebook or Meta are. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're trying to do. Is they're trying to future proof their company. Yeah. Um, because that you know, ultimately, one day all of your users will be dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's that. laughs> And, and, and Facebook will be a graveyard, ultimately. Instagram will be a graveyard. TikTok, yeah. no TikTok with 16, 17 year olds. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't say that because that's not true anymore. <laughs> the, the age has gone up. Um, I spend most of my life on TikTok. <laughs> um, but you know, at some point, they will all be dead. So yeah. that's what Facebook have tried to do. They, Always they... uplifting news. <laughs> <laughs> Luke James Digital. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, right? They're, yeah. they're trying to completely reinvent themselves. I yeah. totally get why they're doing it. Brands will be on it. Um, consumers will be on it. It will be free because it always is with those sort of companies. Yeah. Um, and and it's, I mean, Meta, isn't it? It's not Facebook, but uh, I will continue to call it Facebook. Yeah, for at I least think I will. Ten, but ten years. Yeah, Z Zuckerberg was saying that they're not just a social media company but they are a technology company yeah. and that's what they've been for the past 10 years but it's just not been spoke like branded enough yeah. so i think that was the whole rebranding reason to call it meta but well, that and they're yeah. kind of losing a lot of data of users and yeah <laughs> <laughs> bit of a pr stuff. yeah possibly slightly <laughs> so yeah i think facebook acquired oculus about seven years ago and you know they they were framing Zuckerberg was in this podcast that uh, they're a technology company rather than yeah. just a social media company now. It's just interesting that we're not necessarily now video production and maybe not just digital marketing, but we're in the business of communication. And I think looking towards these new platforms like VR, augmented reality and NFTs and God knows what else crops up in the next yeah, yeah, yeah. two years or if there's another lockdown, what someone thinks of. <laughs> but it would be very interesting to see where the world of communication goes and where we have to start communicating our clients' messages, whether that's on a ad, a billboard, uh, a digital billboard in the VR world, or you know whether things are going to revert back to um, real life, things like that, you know? I, I think I think it'll probably be a, a hybrid of the two, right? Yeah. So I think I think there'll be some some real life that's got uh, got digital elements yeah. and and um, out of world elements in it or metaverse uh, in it. So I think I think they're going to blend better than they do now. Yes. I don't think we're going to be getting our phones out. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think we'll need to. Uh, it might be in a contact lens or or, yeah, or something like scary. that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think you know how we how we consume uh, our our digital pixels that we see every day will be different. I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, brilliant. So some heavy stuff to finish on. <laughs> Not Pretty too much. much to think about. Just the whole 
future well, of the world. Yes, yeah. pretty much. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Luke. Thanks for Pleasure. coming on. It's Pleasure. Been, been awesome. Brilliant. Thank you for watching, wherever you may be, wherever, uh, that's, you know, at the office, at home, you know, wherever. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you on the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>